I'll send it out later. Okay. So we hope that uh, folks will be joining us on uh, Facebook. We'll give folks a moment to kind of to jump in and, and join. It takes a little bit to kind of connect with the Facebook feed and go live. Thanks for joining, folks. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Glad to see everybody here. So, all right. Um, it's always hard to tell if folks are there or not there. All right, we'll get we'll get going. <clears throat> well, welcome everybody. Uh, I'm Greg Ayotte, the Director of Consumer Services for the Brain Injury Association of America. We're here to, uh, with two members of our uh, Brain Injury Advisory Council, talk about Brain Injury Awareness Month, awareness, outreach, and understanding. I wanted to give a few uh, highlights of kind of what's coming up this month uh, with the Brain Injury Association of America. One is uh, we have our Do More campaign, which you'll be able to find on our website. It encourages folks to get involved and try to do outreach to increase awareness and understanding. When you go to our website, the first thing you'll see is the uh, More Than My Brain Injury logo for Brain Injury Awareness Month uh, with a link to a page that uh, lists all of the different uh, resources and opportunities that folks have available encourage folks to go check that out. There's links to uh, the store, the, the, st the bonfire store, which has this lovely mug you can go get to kind of one small way to kind of share awareness and, and understanding. Um, there's links to our, uh, probably tomorrow, there'll be links to our legislative. Oh, you froze, dude. Looks like he's thinking. Come okay. back, yeah. <laughs> Hang on, folks. We're having technology. <clears throat> oh, we lost him. Yeah, I think what Greg was talking about was on the Brain Injury Association of America's website. There are several things coming up. There is the um, Brain Injury Awareness Day on Capitol Hill, March the 6th. Concussion Awareness, the week of March 13th. Um, and, and how to become an advocate the week of March 20th. So I think later on this month, Greg is going to be joined by um, Heather Maddy, BIA's A's, um, informational resource specialist, to discuss how individuals can get involved with brain injury advocacy. Um, and so that's also going to be a Facebook Live event. So uh, stay tuned for more information. That link will probably be on brain injury or BIA's website. So if you kind of wanted to Jot that down. Again, that is the last week of March the 20th. Um, that's something that uh, you may be interested in and uh, can learn more about it at that time with Greg and Heather. That's also BIAUSA.org, right? Um, I think, yes, BIAUSA.org. So there's Greg. There we and go. Sorry about that. A little uh, momentary uh, internet uh, hiccup. My apologies. Yes. Thank you. I was able to hear you guys. So thank you, Darcy, for just jumping right in and finishing the rest of the list. I appreciate that. Um, the only other one I want, yeah, I wanted to mention that we'll have our uh, challenge magazine coming out later this month as well. So uh, be on the lookout for that. That'll also be on our website. Uh, the issue focuses on uh, stories of people with brain injury. So I think that'll be another kind of inspiring uh, tool to use to increase awareness and understanding. So <clears throat> it gives folks a, a kind of a basic overview of kind of the things that are happening uh, with BIA. But one of the questions that we get fairly uh, regular is um, how do I go and increase awareness and understanding about brain injury. I think when folks are just kind of out there, they feel a little overwhelmed and lost and not quite sure where to start. So I thought that I would have uh, 
both of you kind of come on and share a little bit about your experiences on like how you got started and some tips and uh, tools that might be helpful to folks looking to uh, share uh, information about brain injury with others. So I'll let uh, you guys kind of introduce yourselves, tell a little bit about your story. We'll start with uh, Darcy first. Sure. Uh, my name is Darcy Keith. I am an individual who's experienced brain injury 31 years ago. I'm back in 1991. Where there wasn't much information out there about brain injury. Um, I'm also an advisory member on the Brain Injury Advisory Council for Brain Injury Association of America. Um, I'm also on an advisory committee to Ohio State on their brain injury research. So I have a little bit of a wide range of experience with regarding to educating and helping um, other people. But um, back when, in 1991, there wasn't that much information out there about traumatic brain injury. And my father's perception of a person with brain injury was that I would be like a vegetable for the rest of my life. Well, that really didn't sit well with me. And what um, my family did initially was we contacted our local newspaper. They did a front page story on me. And that was great and all. And I, a couple of years later, I moved to Indianapolis and got a job and still there wasn't that much information out there about brain injury. So one of the things that I did to increase advocacy was I contacted my local brain injury association. So that could be your brain injury association. For me, it was of Indiana or whatever state you're located. And to see, hey, where is there a support group meeting around where I live? And that's how I kind of got started was this support group because through that support group, I then was able to make some connections and to ask folks um, how to go about advocacy. And from going to those meetings, I have been speaking for Think First, was it, which is a, a brain and spinal cord injury prevention organization. Mm -hmm. That was one way I could get it and talk about advocacy. And because of my work with that, I then got asked to testify for two state laws that had to do with traumatic brain injury and seatbelts. So that's, I think, one of the good starting points for me was going to a support group and learning about that is of your brain injury association and learning about some of the needs out there. Mm -hmm. and, and from that, I also talked to different, like a rotary club, different organizations, you know, civil service, uh, civil organizations that are looking for speakers. So that's another opportunity. So um, enough about me. How about you, Paul? <laughs> uh, I'm gonna follow you the best I can, Darcy. <laughs> um, so my overwhelm was directly afterwards, 15 years ago, September 11, 2007. And I kept th using my IBM training, which was somebody's got to be talking about this. Somebody's got to be at least coming to a, a point to understand it. So my first breach with awareness was Brain Injury Awareness Day on Capitol Hill. I, fortunately, I was living across the river. So it took three times to actually stay for an hour, the first time I was exhausted and bailed. But um, so my brain injury was uh, a gift almost because awareness has been my middle name since since that day in March of 2008. Mm -hmm. uh, because I found people talking about it. I found uh, information, I found <laughs> knowledge, I found understanding. And I've never let go since. We've done a barbecue for a brain injury called Smokey Bros Barbecue in the Park. We've done a Better Brain Expo a couple of times. That's That was shocking to a lot of brain injury survivors, especially the mom. Like, who are all these people? And um, I do talks just like Darcy in front of Rotary. That was very off-putting at first, but once I got the hang of it, all that came back. So I look upon a lot of this as therapy, quite honestly, because I would go into an empty room and people would fill it and, and want to ask me questions. It's the same thing here. We just have to be a, a, in a broader spectrum. So glad to be here. Glad to glad to move the ball forward. And one thing, if it's okay, Greg, if I mentioned with 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 Paul and I speaking, it's a lot of us we we did it on our own, but that doesn't mean if you are comfortable with your caregiver going with you and maybe interviewing you or asking you questions, you don't have to do it by yourself. You can have somebody go with you, and that's. Um, cause that's kind of scary sometimes to go out and advocate and be the speaker yourself. So it's okay to, to have somebody go with you and help you kind of cue you along. Just remember, that's really it's, all, good. Yeah. it's all practice. It's yeah. all practice. Mm -hmm. I was going to say like for both of you, I mean, 
I've talked to a lot of folks about this. And they feel <clears throat> it's overwhelming to try to share information about brain injury. One, because it feels too big. Like there's so many mm -hmm. things you can talk about. You could talk for hours about it. And additionally, when you're sharing your story, you could talk for two hours about all your experiences following the injury because there's so many different kind of twists and turns and, uh, you know, it's like a roller coaster uh, of emotions and uh, progressions and regressions and, and challenges with family and friends. <clears throat> so what was the strategies or tips or stuff that you did to try to figure out how to tell your story in a, in a time frame that works to kind of keep the attention of the, uh, of the audience? Mm -hmm. So for me, when I spoke for Think First, um, the injury, the that program talks about you know your your injury and what it's like to live with a brain injury. Well, like you said, Greg, that's all over the spectrum because we could, you know, to get us to focus on one thought without going to another thought. Um, that's you know so many things like our brains work so quickly that we could ramble on and on. One thing that helped me was I had no cards because my memory was so poor at the time. I had no cards that logically could go me go with me uh, from one topic to another topic without sounding like I was rambling on. So it kept me on point, kept me on topic, and it kind of made made it appear to be a, make sense kind of yeah. on how I put it, how I could list it. So that worked for me. Uh, for me, it was a realization that once I wrote my story, I thought I was done. I gave it to somebody to read and they're like, Paul, whatever, what about this? What about this? What about this? You skipped that. You skipped that. I wrote my story at least <laughs> four times, uh, much to my chagrin, but it came out beautiful because I do, I am human and I have human qualities. And if I can connect on a human quality level, I can do better. And so the anxiety was, was all the way through, uh, the, the, the sleepless nights were all the way through the, the, the population that I was asking. And it really made me feel understood. It made me feel heard, more importantly. Um, but yeah, writing my story, it, it took me a couple of times because the first one was like skipping a rock on a real placid uh, water. But the third time I was laying these big chunks of rocks, I was like that's what needs to be in there. I think that's an important point. It's the amount of <clears throat> time and preparation that's required to get to that point. Like you don't just write it down and it's perfect, right? Mm -hmm. You have this process of kind of uh, refining and revising the story to like, all right, what's the level of detail I need to go into without getting too in the weeds, but still give a, an honest reflection of kind of what, what happens. So that, that's an important part of that, I think, the process of giving yourself the time and the, and the uh, repetition, I guess, right, of kind of telling your story to continually refine it. And um, I really like the idea, Darcy, you talked about the, uh, you know, putting the note cards together, because that's that preparation of what is, what's the story I want to tell? Mm -hmm. How do I want to tell it? And so if you have it written out, you can just follow that story. You know the story. You know it just gives you the path of these are the things I want to make sure I, I touch on and I talk about. And that can be really helpful. It certainly helps with the some of the anxiety I think that folks might feel about talking like, okay, I've, I've done my work. Mm -hmm. Let me share my, my story. So one of the other kind of the flip side of that too is um, – for the one of the other kind of common challenges we get from folks contacting us are they're like family and friends don't understand the injury. Mm -hmm. And so it's more like, like how how do you try to explain it to those that are close to you? Like that is one of those challenges. I don't know if you guys have any tips or strategies. Paul's waving his hand. All right, I got you. Call on me. Call on me. I got you. All right. This this happens weekly, and really the survivor that calls me in tears, saying my son doesn't understand, my husband doesn't get it. He loves me, but he doesn't get it. Um, there are movies out there. One is called The Crash Reel, and you actually watch a survivor step through the process of first comes denial, then realization, and then what do you do next? Well, who else is out there? 
what's what's hap you know what can happen um because as i was told there's nothing else you can do um no there's, i fly in the face of that um so does, Darcy, so does so does the other people that are talking about this um but watching a movie called crash reel wa watching a movie called concussion uh, watching a movie about brain injury let somebody else tell the story yeah. let somebody else be the, the person that educates you. And you've said it a thousand, two thousand, three thousand times. But as, as humans, we don't understand brain injury. Help them by showing them a movie about it. That's my mm -hmm. suggestion. I think that's a great idea, Paul. And like the, the movie, Fifty First Dates, sometimes that applies to some of us, but it also t shows short term memory. Can, and somebody asked me when that first, mo when that first movie um, came out. <laughs> The, is this what brain injury is like? And I said, for some people, yes. For other people, no. But and it's like with brain injury, we're all in the same ocean. We might be in different boats. Mm -hmm. So some of us can recall things better than others. But I also like with, with COVID, um, brain injury, I've made it like similar to COVID in the sense that some people go through a brain fog where they can't come up with words, can't come up with thoughts that, you know, that's, it's just not as quick. And that's what I also analogy um, give to brain injury of I can't come up with something as quickly or because my brain is going through a process. It's kind of like that brain fog that a lot of folks have with COVID. Um, but I think I think watching movies, allowing someone else to tell the story yeah. is perfect. I agree with that. So I think a lot of times it's the, my experience has been it's, the messenger is, is as important as the message, right? And so if you're trying to explain it to your family, but your family doesn't see you as an expert or you know, having experience in brain injury, they might discount what you're saying, even though it's your experience. Mm -hmm. But right, trying to kind of sidestep that a little bit by sharing stories. I'm gonna tell you what I often suggest is, I'm just gonna put the plug in for what you guys did last year uh, the Altman webinar about the early years or the Facebook, other Facebook live events we did about the different topics and issues around brain injury, like seeing the stories of other people that experience something similar, that helps the, I think sometimes the families wrap their head around, oh, this does happen. The other folks, oh, that's what they're talking about. And so telling the story uh, can make a big difference in trying to help uh, it's, it's family a family and friends kind of understand yes. that a little bit. The word I like to use is resonate. Resonate. Mm -hmm. True. So one of the questions we had that came in was kind of the, the flip of that is, can we talk about how uh, the caregivers can help the survivors in their recovery, even when it's difficult for them? Or, Darcy, uh, you go first and I'll okay. follow Sure. I think from a caregiver standpoint, first and foremost, you have to take care of yourself because if you aren't taking care of yourself as a caregiver, you won't be able to help us that need your help. So I think probably first that and foremost, that's that's important. But secondly, from um, from a caregiver standpoint, um, things that would help us patients is probably the biggest thing that you can give us because we may not be able to articulate or communicate what we need, what we want um, without some difficulty. So that could be either, you know, your slurred speech or just being able to process or just getting out the words. So patience, I think, is huge mm -hmm. for something to help us. One thing that really helped me was um, cues. Like I may make a post-it note or, or if a caregiver, if you see that the person that you're caring for that has the injury, um, there's a, there's a routine or there's something that um, they need to be reminded of daily, having a cue, uh, like a post-it note to help remind them. And that's going to help them process again, a, a routine. And once a routine is established, that may be better um, for their skills and their level of learning. So those are just a couple of things that I think from a caregiver standpoint that would probably or have helped me in the past. Mm -hmm. So how about, how about you, Pa? I keep thinking of the word, take a deep breath. This is not going to just go away. This mm -hmm. doesn't just disappear. 
Uh, sometimes it does, and boy, that's a miracle in and of itself. But for the most part, take a deep breath, because what I also do is answer the phone when folks need help, when they've gone through everything that they think they've they've got to, to offer. And it's a hurried sounding person on the other end of the line going, and what else can I do? And what else is there? I'm like, take a deep breath, realize that this is long term, and then go from there. It's an acceptance that's for me, it was the key to the kingdom because I, I pulled myself up like Darcy on my own with two other friends. And my two other friends were taking notes because I was going to repeat it uh, several times after that. Um, and, and it was just a building block of realization of this always doesn't go away. And if you take a deep breath and, and settle, you can realize that all these symptoms or actions or words or they're just part of the process. And that was that gave me peace straight away. Um, and, and, it, and I'm sharing it with the next person that calls just because I care to have that message extended. I hope that helps. I think, both, I think those are all excellent ideas and suggestions for folks. I think that part of the challenge is, right, there's no one recipe. You never know what exactly is going to work for somebody. And I used to always uh, tell the folks when I worked in brain injury rehab, I'm like, rehabilitation is as much of an art as a science. You have to understand the science of it, but the art is knowing when to push, when to lay off. You know, what's the style that's going to work with somebody? What's their learning style? What's going to help them uh, kind of more likely to be uh, successful? So, and you, as a family member or a caregiver, you're trying to do that. You've got to want to give yourself the opportunity to make a mistake. If you might try something and not work, like, all right, well, let's look, why didn't that work? Let's think about why, what, what could be helpful. Um, so the other, I'm going to flip a little bit with the, another question. Um, this one had asked about how do we, how do you recommend kind of getting involved in brain injury advocacy and awareness uh, locally, like in your in your own community? I know you had talked about some of the ways you had started, but so for somebody who was trying to start today, what are some things you think you would say, you should check this stuff out? What should some things be that people should look at? You want to go first, Darcy? Uh, sure. I, I can go. One, one thing that I look at is something that I am very interested in or very passionate about because like for me, my crash was a result of, or my injuries as a result of not wearing a seatbelt. So that is a passion of mine is to help other people not experience what I've experienced. So I may get more involved um, or find something in my community where it might have to deal with traffic safety, or let's say there's a high school program around prom time and they want someone to come in and talk about seatbelts to keep the seniors or the students safe, just different things like that. So find something that interests you uh, with your brain injury that you can tie that in and, um, and kind of partner or, or kind, kind of talk to the um, organization that, you know, you could partner with on that. That's a great idea. Uh, That's so a great I'm idea. I've always been an opportunist, um, ask anybody that knows me. <laughs> so I used to dr drive a Jeep, so I got in a Jeep club. The Jeep club had a ride every year. They called it the wild side ride. And it, it toured South Louisiana. Maybe some alligators were saw, uh, seen, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. but, and, the, and at the end of it, they would have a barbecue. And the barbecue had seven teams. And they were all excited. We're going to raise money for brain injury awareness. It's awesome. And I, and I asked him, I said, like, could I get more? Could I bring more barbecuers? And we ended up two years later becoming the barbecue pit master of South Louisiana. And everybody talked about our barbecue. So as you can imagine, 28 cooks overwhelmed this group. But at the same time, I'm grinning ear to ear going, yeah, these people are going to hear from me because they're going to ask me to say something. So that day, I gained a whole bunch of friends that I never knew before because I told something from my heart after the six times that I wrote it. Um, it's just a simple question of how can I add to this? Uh, because that's what I used to do is I used to gather people for a specific purpose. So it was very rewarding to realize that, hey, 
maybe even a, a bake sale, or maybe even a, it could be very simple. Um, mm -hmm. But at least you're, as I rode the coattails of this club that I was in, I added to that club and they had a lot of barbecue that day. Very, very good. <laughs> well, all excellent points. All right, so I want to switch gears slightly and just also talk about the advocacy or uh, awareness and understanding kind of at us more granular level, micro level, right? Um, and I'll share the story that I've been thinking about is inside of your, we're going to talk about this is uh, we had a, a person with a brain injury who had contacted us. He had sustained his injury many years ago. He lived on his own with a little bit of help from his from his parents, um, but relatively independent. And the parents got older and they went into like a skilled nursing facility. So he needed some some support and the sister uh, decided, oh, well, she'll go and help. She had not really been involved in his care or recovery or anything, so she'd kind of seen it from afar. And as she started to get more involved, you could see she was getting really frustrated with him that why do I need to keep telling you these things? Why do I keep, like, what's, why do you ask these things over and over? Like, why, do, why can't you remember these things? And it was creating a lot of tension, so uh, the uh, person with the injury had contacted us looking for tools and, and, and tricks or strategies to help with the uh, build the awareness of the of the sister. And to the sister's credit, she said, well, they're welcome to call us. So the sister's credit, they, she called to kind of get some information. She just talked about her own kind of frustrations with it. Um, and it was interesting that a lot of it came from anxiety that she was not going to do right by her brother like she had seen the parents take such good care of him and she felt like i had no idea what i'm doing um and as we shared some information about helping her understand a little bit about what brain injury looks like which is what she was seeing shared some of the stories of other people so she could see it get her connected with a support group for her own support as well uh, we got a call back from the from the person with the injury. You know, a few months later, it was like night and day, all of a sudden, this, like the light went on for the sister, where she understood, like, oh, that's this is my role. I get it. I can, you know, like, think a little different on the strategies I use. So I think too, that's it, those are important awareness and outreach because that changed the trajectory of that person's ability to live independently. The whole family. Yeah. yeah. It changes, right? So those are those small teachable moments that if you're connecting with support groups or other groups out there and kind of making it known that, hey, you want to try to help people, people will find you. Mm -hmm. So if you're able to kind of share your experiences and have and do some of the preparation, right? So, you know, know where the, where the resources are, mm -hmm. right? So know a little bit about how to find a support group, know about like the materials on the BIA website, the, the model systems website, like those type of materials can be helpful to educate mm -hmm. others. And you're not doing all of the work, you're just pointing them in the right direction. You're trying to connect them with the things that'll be helpful. But I wanted to just put that plug in there too, that people sometimes think about awareness as this big, you know, I'm gonna talk to hundreds of people and, and change their minds and like, that's one phase, but I think the other part is just as important. It's like having that one-on-one -on -one conversation with somebody and helping them understand the injury just a little bit better. I think you bring up a great point, Greg. Um, and for those of us who can't get out and go to a support group, what, what tools are there? What resources are there? And I think um, one of the tools that we have is social media. And there are a lot of Facebook support groups mm -hmm. or support groups or zoom support groups that that a person can be part of like for example in indiana there's they have a zoom support group so anybody can join and i think finding your tribe or finding like people that you can share experiences or tips or what worked for you so whether that's in person or if, if you can't if you're not comfortable with going out being in a in a support group or a Facebook group on for survivors uh, or folks with brain injury. That is another key thing that will help 
in your recovery as well as share information yeah. with your caregiver. Just yeah. one thing yeah. I want to add to that is, is ask the question, does this, do I value what this person is telling me? Does this, does this line up with other, what other people are telling me? Because on social media, it's love. I get it. It's great. But make sure it's, it's what can actually help you versus getting outside of this big, huge circle of, of understanding. And now you don't know where you are. It's like, yeah. So cross, cross reference with uh, BIA, USA, mm -hmm. uh, model systems, uh, knowledge, MSKTC, sorry, I had, they had to have a <laughs> once. Yeah. MSKTC is, is, has got some information on it, has some cartoon, cartoons on it that will actually map out uh, understanding for your family, which I found really helpful. I run a support group. Where we talk about how to get healthy versus keep going through the brain injury. There's, there's the difference. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, and yes, and yes. All, all excellent. Very important. Yeah, I think like I said, we talked a lot about this and I'm just going to reinforce it one more time, like the importance of the preparation, kind of doing your homework and, and preparing for kind of putting yourself out there because you don't want to have to say you're going to help somebody and not know how to help them when they come ask. You want to have some idea. You don't have to know the answers to all the questions. Um, so you just need to have some information available that you can share with folks readily to at least give them some feeling about you know, what it is, what brain injury is. Kind of, kind of like a base, kind of yeah. like a base understanding of, of not only you, but bounce it off others. What do you think about this? And, and just keep that learning curve going. And, and you may not get it right the first time. I mean, I didn't, I know I didn't get it right the first time. So if you don't get it right the first time, keep at it. Keep yeah. going. So we had one more uh, question to ask. Are there any specific support groups that you would recommend you would suggest? Mine, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think of that when I asked the question. I'm like, hey, <laughs> I'll take a plug. Um, I, I mean, to me, the answer is the one that works for you. Yeah. Yes, I agree. Uh, I agree. You know, I agree. Each, each group is its own group, and you might find some that are true support groups and some that are much more kind of educational. We like have speakers come in and have discussions, mm -hmm. and so. I always tell folks so if there's, you know, more than one around you, go check them out. Go to a, a couple of meetings for each of them, see what might be there. Um, there's more of them available online now than there were too, so you can certainly. I know it's not the same mm -hmm. being in person, but if you can't get to a group, sometimes checking an online group can be helpful, just to be able to see and talk to others that understand the injury can make a big, big difference. It's really cool to watch two survivors connect, and I have to interrupt them to start the meeting where we have a speaker. <laughs> that, that's my best day ever. Yeah. Uh, and I'll lean over and want to give her your phone number. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. Let me do that. Yeah, yeah. You can talk outside of the group. That's right. Yes. Um, so I don't know if there's any kind of closing statement that you all wanted to make or some thing that you really wanted to reinforce as we kind of uh, wrap up this little in, inaugural Facebook Live for Awareness Month? The only thing I would suggest is if you try to be, you know, an advocate and it doesn't work out the first time, keep at it because it took me a few times to get somebody to listen or to, or to talk to that person or just to explain what a brain injury is. So it could be one person may receive it very well, the next person may not, but keep at it um, and, and keep learning and growing. So those that's probably the only thing that I would um, suggest as we close. Great. Uh, brain injuries all around us. We have movie stars, we have action heroes, and they're, they're getting these concussions. We have NFL players. This is more broad spectrum than anyone could ever imagine. And like Darcy said, don't give up. But, but if you can shadow somebody that's doing advocacy work and you like the way they do it, you like what they're doing, try that. Um, speaking is not always everybody's forte, not especially when you're overwhelmed, but I bet you $5 down the road, you're going to be speaking. 
So you may have to start with a crawl and go to a walk. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Yeah. Well, excellent points. I think that's a good place to end right there. That give yourself time to to learn, mm -hmm. figure out what works for you. Don't stop learning, uh, and get the you know get your get support. Get support. It's not something you have to do by yourself. So. If folks have more questions that they think of after, you're always welcome to contact us at the Brain Injury Association of America. Uh, you can contact us through the Facebook page. You can contact us on our 800 line uh, or through our email on our website. Feel free to, to reach out if there's info we can share and point you towards. We are always happy to do so. Paul and Darcy, thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate your taking the time to share a little bit about your experiences, uh, sharing your expertise. It's much appreciated. My pleasure. My pleasure. <laughs> that was not that was not coordinated, right? No. <laughs> it is our pleasure to be here. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. Person, the next Absolutely. person that's hurting, we hear you. Yes. The next person that's lost, we hear you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. We'll take care, everybody. Have a great rest of the day. Stay safe. Thanks for tuning in, y'all. <laughs>